What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are gonna be discussing the worst products of 2017. I am gonna put a disclaimer on this video to say that these products may not be horrible for the whole world, but they just didn't work for me and for one reason or another, I did not like them, so that's why I'm putting them in this video. If these products work for you and you love them, oh my god, amazing, I am so happy you didn't waste your money. But I feel like these products are, are the ones that I just wasted my money on and I can't get it back, you know what I'm saying? This might end up being a bit of a long video, so why don't you go ahead, pause this video, grab a snack, grab a drink, come on back, and then we're gonna chit chat about why I didn't like these products and why they made it to this video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because you don't want to miss this face. Oh, these lashes are like super curly. The first product I'm going to talk about is from Laneige and I believe it is the only makeup product that they create, but do correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not entirely familiar with the brand, but I didn't really care for the two-tone lipsticks that they came out with earlier in the year. These became a huge sensation all over Korea and Asia because there was, I believe, a couple of famous soap opera stars or movie stars, something along those lines that wore these lipsticks. So when they became mass produced for, for the masses, <laughs> everyone jumped on the bandwagon to pick these up. And it's not that they're horrible, but I just find them so gimmicky. Like the formula looks okay, they're moisturizing on, but I don't care for a square tip applicator. I don't like this whole Pez dispenser thing because I still go in there and I try to twist the lipstick up. Um, they're just, I don't know, they're too gimmicky for me. I think that's what I really didn't like about them. They were a little bit difficult to work with and it's just not my cup of tea. If I wanted to do an ombre lip rather than just having it be an all-in-one, I would just grab two lipsticks. I think I have enough of those to make it work. Plus the price tag on this is really expensive, so yeah. There's another reason why it's in the worst of 2017. The next item is actually from one of my favorite skincare lines and I'm so sad to put this in here but it just did not work for me and I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to make it work and I did try a bunch of different techniques. It is from Hylamide. This is the Pore Delete. This is a really strange liquid that you basically put on your face. Ooh, I just took out way too much. Um, it comes out kind of like a glue. You're supposed to spread it all over your face and it's supposed to get rid of all of your pores and just give you a photoshopped look essentially. And I don't know, for me, this just didn't work. I, I use a pore minimizer as a primer because I want to get rid of all of my pores and then put my makeup on top so everything looks smooth and uniform. I put this on and it looked like a huge patchy mess. No matter what I did to it, it just would not work. Whether it was over makeup, under makeup, whether I used a beauty blender or my fingers, um, whether I just used it on its own, it just, it didn't work for my face. Um, um, it could be my technique, whatever the case is, I can't stand that product <laughs> and that's why it is in this video. It looks like a watery Elmer's glue, really. <laughs> what it looks like. The next item is a lip product and it is from CoverGirl. Now unfortunately I don't have them anymore. I did throw them out because I did not like them at all and I never wore them again after my review video. They kind of come in the same tube that the L'Oreal infallible uh, lipsticks come in but they just had this really weird sort of gel cushiony formula to them which may be great for pigment and some people might like that really high gloss shine with their lipstick, but for me it was just too much. It ended up feeling really weird on my lips, a little too sticky. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I actually prefer the L'Oreal lipsticks instead. I think they're wonderful. There are so many great drugstore liquid lipstick formulas coming out right now, and I just felt like CoverGirl sort of missed the mark on that one. But I will say, CoverGirl did come out with a new matte liquid lipstick which I did pick up one to try because I am curious 
this. So I'm going to be putting that to the test really soon. The next item that I want to talk about isn't really an item. It's an entire brand that I can't stand. <laughs> it's Pretty Vulgar. So I did a whole video review on the products from Pretty Vulgar and I ended up returning everything because I just disliked it all. Um, the eyeshadow palette that I had, it just faded so quickly on me, just didn't wear very well. Um, I ended up picking up a felt tip liner, which was one of the worst liners I had ever worked with. There was a blush in there that just went on really patchy, a lipstick that was okay, but I have better ones. Just everything just fell really, really short on that brand. Couldn't stand it. Took everything back to Sephora. That was a huge, huge fail for me. I do have lots of friends, though, that have recommended the highlighter from Pretty Vulgar to me. They say that one is really good. I also think there's a different eyeliner that may come in a pot that's actually a little bit better. But whatever the case is, I didn't like the brand. That's why it's in this video for me. So pfft. I might get a lot of heat for the next product I'm about to talk about. But I want to preface this by saying the normal liquid lipstick formula from Huda Beauty, I actually love. I have some colors that I am diehard for that I cannot live without. Cheerleader is one of my favorite colors. I love her lip strobes. I think they're wonderful. But the liquid lipsticks she came out with for the summer were awful. I did a video review on these and all I can remember is how much it accentuated all of the lines on my lips. It settled down. It looked really crackly. It wouldn't really dry down either. These just weren't good. The only color out of these four that actually performed really well was Mamacita, this fiery orange color. This one here was so, so good. It was unlike these other three here. These ones bit the big one, like good lord, they suck balls. But this one here was fantastic. So if you are looking for a great bright orange lipstick, highly recommend the Huda Beauty one in Mamacita. These three here in Wild Child, Bikini Bear, and Jet Setter. Eh. I remember comparing this next product to my ex-boyfriend because I hated it so much. Um, it is this right here, the Lorac Downtown LA Urban Artist Palette. So this one here felt so short of the mark. This one came out with all of the other California inspired palettes that Lorac put out this summer. They were all amazing. At least every single one that I picked up except this one. I just found these shades to be super patchy. They didn't blend well at all. The only color in here that I actually enjoyed is this highlighter shade called Art Walk. It is nice, smooth, creamy, buttery. Hopefully you can see it there. It's just such a pretty, pretty color. I love that, but everything else I just could not stand. Moving right along to another overpriced and blah sort of palette, it's the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Eye Palette. This one here, once you factor in taxes, import fees, customs duties, you name it, plus the actual conversion from US dollars to Canadian dollars, this palette cost me well over a hundred dollars and it just was not worth it. These shadows are meh at their very best. I was just really disappointed with it. The reason this palette is not in the garbage yet is because I did spend over $100 on it. I just can't see myself throwing it away because I invested so much money and I can't really get that money back. But these shadows were just mediocre at best. Like there are so many great formulas out there that are far superior to this that I think this is just so not worth it. Um, especially for the price tag. This just looks so similar to the Naked palettes from Urban Decay. I would recommend those in a heartbeat over this one here. I just find these shadows lacked pigment and they just weren't really great in the threesomes that they, they come in, like in the, the three-part thingy-ma-bobbers, like sections that they come in. Thingy-ma-bobbers. Jesus, where did that come from? There are a couple of shadows in here that I actually did like, so for those, I am going to use them down to pan. 
um, and I bet you that's not going to take me a very long time because there's also so little product included in here. That was another big gripe that I had. There is so much less product in here than any other brand and they charge you through the roof. I feel like you should just bend over, take the telephone pole up your ass if you're going to buy this because that's how painful it's going to be. Let's continue on with some eyeshadows because I have two other palettes I want to talk about. Um, the first ones actually come from NYX. These are the Perfect Filter palettes. I picked these up when they all came out in the different shade ranges. I thought they looked kind of cool. You got a lot of product in here. The price was right and I thought, wow, I can really make these work. The more I played around with these, the more I realized I just, I didn't like the formula. They weren't very pigmented and I found the colors just, I don't know, they were really disappointing at best. Um, they didn't blend well for me either. I wouldn't say they're the worst eyeshadows I've ever worked with, but they're just not great. I'm not going to say that these were the worst shadows I've ever played with. I mean, they're okay for the most part, but they're just not great for me, and that's why they're going in this video. I expect NYX to be a little more cost effective, but these palettes I think were around the $20 range, and the little NYX shadows are a lot cheaper, so I'd recommend their single shadows over these palettes any day. The last palette I am going to talk about is this one here from Lorac. It actually pains me to put this palette in this video because I love this brand so much. I mean, I did put another Lorac palette in here I know but this formula in here is good there's nothing wrong with this formula it's just the colors are so eh. I did pick this up I think it was over the summertime or early fall and I just I don't know I think I bought it because it was Lorac to be quite honest with you that's probably the reason why and I love the color avocado toast I think it is so different and unique I don't often see colors like this I thought it was beautiful but this is the kind of palette that cannot stand on its own it definitely needs a complimentary palette another palette that's really going to bolster the pastel colors in here um, and I just find this isn't something that I would ever travel with and quite honestly I have I haven't used this palette since I did the review and maybe a week past that. It's just been sitting in my drawer. So honestly, this might end up being a palette that I end up donating because eh, it's just blah. So I don't know if I'd call this the worst palette, but it was definitely disappointing from Lorac. The last two items I'm going to be talking about are foundations and if you've been watching this channel for a while you probably know which ones I'm going to be talking about. Uh, the first one is the L'Oreal Total Cover Infallible Foundation. This is probably something that Satan himself created and said, here mankind, enjoy the horrors of this foundation. I had such high hopes for this foundation when I was going in to review it initially because I had heard so many great things about it but it clung to every single dry patch on my face not to mention it became really splotchy it moved around a lot it was not transfer proof um, this just really bit the big one I couldn't wait to get this foundation off of my face I I remember this so clearly and I've never recommended this to anyone I think the normal infallible foundation from L'Oreal is great. This one here, I don't know what they did to it, but it just did not work for my skin. And you guys know, I have textured skin, so when I throw something full coverage on like this, I expect it to smooth everything out. This did no such thing. It just highlighted all of my texture and just made it look really, really awful. It is a huge, huge fail for me, and I feel like it is the king or queen of this video of being the worst of 2017. And lastly, I have to put the Jouer foundation in here. This is the Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid. Again, this is another foundation that I had super high hopes for. I wore it, I reviewed it, I wore it a few times after that, and I just couldn't get this to work with my skin. I think this is a foundation that is great for people who have really smooth skin, who don't have any breakouts, um, who don't really need a 
lot but want full coverage, this might be a great foundation for those people. But I, I am not one of those people and it did not wear well for me. It transferred a lot, it shifted a lot, it just, it was a mess. It was a mess, let's be real. If you're interested in seeing that wear test, I am gonna link the review video for you in the description box below, so feel free to check that out. But it is definitely in my worst of 2017, especially at the price point. And that's it for the roundup of worst products of 2017. And like I said in the beginning of this video, if some of these products worked really well for you, amazing. I'm so happy for you. But these products just didn't work out for me. They weren't up to my standards. And quite honestly, I'm probably going to put all of these back in the bucket that they were in and I'm going to either throw them away or donate them depending on what they are because they just don't work for me and I'm probably never going to reach for them again. Sound off in the comment section below and let me know what products disappointed you in 2017. I'm sure all of you try lots of makeup products just like myself. Let me know what didn't work out for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. You can also connect with me on all of my social media. I'm going to link all of it in the description box below for you. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you are all having an amazing day no matter where you are in the world. Stay beautiful and I will see you soon. Bye guys.